So, um, we talk a lot about rookie burnout. Right? Yes. And yes. that's a major, major factor in the NFL that kind of gets a little underplayed is when you have a rookie, physically, their body goes through an entire college season. They prepare for the draft, right? Mm -hmm. After the draft, they go really right to the teams not long after. OTAs. They go to OTAs and then they go to mini camp. And, you know, like there's a lot of stuff that happens to these rookies that really puts them on the rails. And then they have the NFL season, which is longer than their college season, Mostly, right? Yeah. And you run into that rookie burnout. So a couple examples real quick that I think are pretty synonymous. Subscribe and ride with us on YouTube, and don't forget to check out live play-by-play -play of the Bills season coming up on Sportscaster. Before we get started, I do want to point out Legends and Stars at Batavia Downs, legendsandstars.net, if you're looking for something to do. Uh, they are uh, massive Bills, uh, are going to be there Friday and Saturday, October 25th and 26th. Um, we are going to be there as well. Tons of guys are going to be there. Lots of current Buffalo Bills, lots of former Buffalo Bills um, are all scheduled to be there. So we are going to be there uh, walking around. So come hang out with us. Come come get some autographs. We'll go with uh, Alvin Kamara. Beautiful example. Okay. And we'll go with Leonard Fournette. Gotcha. I don't understand that they're at the running back position, but hear me out here. So Leonard Fournette got put to the coals as soon as he got to Jacksonville. He was a stud the first 10 weeks of his rookie season. Yes. What happened after that? He burned out. Yeah. They he burned just... out because he he went through that transition that all the rookies do, mm -hmm. and playing a position that is demanding in and of itself from a physical physicality standpoint. He uh, he's only his body was conditioned for however many years he played college football. I'm not really sure if it was three or four. I don't know. He's he was playing 11, 12, 13 right. games. That's it. 11, 12, 13. 11, 12, 13. You add in that the amount of stress that he had going into a pro team. And the amount of stress it is playing for a pro team and being asked, given that responsibility, mm -hmm. I don't care if you're getting paid or not, that's that's going to wear on you. So around right. 10 weeks, he flames up. Right. Alvin Kamara, different circumstance. Mm -hmm. Alvin Kamara, you owned in fantasy. Dropped him. Dropped him. Yep. Drafted him in really late round. Yep. Or picked him up free agency. I can't remember. But no, no, no. Somebody else drafted him. Dropped, dropped him. him. You picked him up on free agency. And I was impatient. And you were impatient. You dropped him. But yeah. why were you impatient? Because he here was play. this running back who you thought was going to be effective in a Sean Payton offense. Week four comes. Week five comes. Nowhere to be seen, right? Mm -hmm. Nowhere to be seen. What happens with Alvin Kamara? <laughs> Explodes, right? But he what happened? On my team. He was on your team. Listen, I traded Patrick Mahomes before. <laughs> I traded Patrick Mahomes after his rookie season. So, listen, I feel you, right? But Why do people listen to us? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we don't get fantasy advice. <laughs> that's right. Um, but uh, the, the major difference between the two is Fournette didn't have the opportunity to give his body a chance to recover. Yes. Kamara did. And mm -hmm. it's had major impacts on their career afterwards, mm -hmm. right? So... What you I'm saw saying, Kamara play the rest of that season, right? Be and successful, and then had a whole off season, season, a real off season. Go ahead. Right. Yeah. So rookies don't really get a regular off season; they don't get one, no. right? So, all right. So here's where we take this now. Devin Singletary has ten touches in two games that he's been active. Right. I love it. We go into a week six bye. How many games are left on the Bills season? Okay, this is that new math. Uh, Sixteen minus oh, five geez. is eleven. Perfect so, number, though. So right? proud of you, right? Yeah. I told 11 you I'm off games. The clock right now. <laughs> 11 games, 11 right? Games, yeah. Which is about the same length as a college football season, right? Okay. So he's he really hasn't, the last couple of weeks, I understand he's been injured. Yes. But if you're going to start seeing Devin Singletary, you're going to start seeing him in week seven, week eight, because. So you give him an extra. I yeah, give him an extra what, week. I play yeah, against what, the Eagles. Yeah, what, are you, what are you worried about, Miami? Right? No, no, You're not really worried about Miami. The Eagles game is when I really expect to see a little bit more of Devin Singletary. Unless you think that, because the Eagles aren't a slouch. No, well, that's what I'm saying. No, no, my point is this. For him to knock some rust off in Miami? Oh, I think he'll be activated for Okay, Miami, okay. I, I, I thought you were talking about just resting of, him through. No, I don't think you're going to see a ton of touches. Five, I think six see, carries, maybe? Exactly. That's what I mean. If he's active, I think it'll be a limited workload. But I really think McDermott is very conscious of that rookie burnout with, with Singletary. And even if Singletary had been healthy, 
I don't think he would have seen a ton of touches. What's the difference between him and Oliver? That's I mean, a good point. I mean, well, Oliver's a first round pick. I don't think McDermott hold. If, he showed with Edmonds that that for, that if you're a first round pick, rookie burnout, he does not care. Well, I yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you're a first round pick, you're well, playing. Well, Edmonds is a, is a he's a freak. I mean, we could say that. That's the cop out. But here's the thing yeah. that's, that's different than you said. You talk about Kamara. Yeah. You talk about Fournette. Fournette was driven into the ground. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. But he's playing first, second, and third downs. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Not the same. Not the same with Oliver. Yeah. They're platooned out. He's played yeah. 55, sometimes 60 percent of the snaps. Right. So he's not all the time. Right. He's getting that rest periodically throughout it, and then this bye week will be perfect for him. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, a guy that you got to you got to think had some worry coming into the season because he was a little undersized. Mm -hmm. But um, those guys, the big uglies in the trenches, they're used to just pounding away at right. at two or three yards a clip anyway. It's, it seems like it's setting up perfectly for Singletary to do that. Yeah. And I love you bring up that point because I don't think a lot of people will be talking about that because they're calling for it. We want Singletary, we want Singletary. Is he coming back? Is he coming back? He's so dynamic. He does all this stuff. He's great. He can catch the ball. He can run the ball. He does all, he's right. like pinball. But that rookie flame out, no one talks about. No. No and, one talks and about. And Singletary's going to break out. Like he's been too dynamic early in the season to not be able to recapture that later in the season. Right? Yes. What you saw at the beginning of the season wasn't a mirage. No. Like, his inside vision is really good. Yes. You know? Like, when he gets into space, he's really good. Right? They've like, seen that he can do it in a game. In yeah. a live game. So, they're like, right. listen, all right, you got to let this, this little thing going. Let's rest you. That's mm -hmm. why I say, you know, he wasn't rushed to come back this week. No. I don't think no. he was. Mm -mm. I don't think Foster was either. No. It's a groin and hamstring issues. Those those soft tissue injuries, man, if you're not careful, so your annoying. season is just going to nag the whole way. And you don't want that. Yeah. It's, especially when you have a 37, 36-year-old Frank Gore. Like, you you don't need... He gets older every episode. I know, right? That's <laughs> that 87-year-old Frank Gore. <laughs> At the end of the season, I'll be in a walker. It's like, wow, you're the, like the reverse Benjamin Button. <laughs> Well, I mean, I, tr truthfully, right? Frank Gore against Tennessee, what, 14 touches? That's a perfect number. It's an ideal number. He's still a monster. I know. Isn't it so great? It really is. It's just great. I did not appreciate Frank. I did not appreciate preseason Frank Gore no. as much as I appreciate in season Frank Gore. <laughs> Very, different. Very different. Very different. But um, everybody that's waiting for Singletary, it's coming. It's coming. It will happen. But I don't. I think the Eagles game is the first real chance you're going to see Devin Singletary get more than a few touches, and oh, then yeah. it's going to increase and it's going to keep getting bigger. I think, he'll get, I think he'll get. Yeah, you're. I'm, you're 100 spot on. But I think he comes back for the Dolphins game, and he won't touch the ball very much. No, I just don't think so. Yeah, no. Well, I mean, listen. It, Who gets we, inactivated? Yelled it. No, they'll still carry. They'll still carry four backs. So they'll go with five wide receivers instead of six wide receivers. Hmm. McKenzie. If you're carrying Roberts and McKenzie, you're gonna you're gonna leave McKenzie inactive. I think. McKenzie's averaging eighty yards every time he touches the ball. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, we'll see how that happens. We'll see how yeah. things out. But I I love I love your thought process on that because no one really thinks about that. Good. I like with that. with that being said, with all that laid out on the table, uh oh, what are you gonna do? No, the Bills are four and one, right? It's happening. <laughs> I don't like how it's happening, and there's lots that we can complain about. But the fact is, is two that games, they're winning. two games, you did not cause a turnover, and, and you, you and won. you held those teams to eight points and seven points. Isn't that sick? It's disgusting. It's disgusting production. Is that how you win the AFC East? Has it been this easy? Apparently. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, how close was the Jim Schwartz teams to this? Schwartz's defenses were fun. That they, was a fun defense. They were um, they were pretty disciplined. They lined up and hit you. They did cause turnovers, but they would give up big plays in the wrong time. It'd be like a third and 12 in the third quarter. And they're like, hey, they need the ball... Nope. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and a pass to uh, so-and-so for a 15-yard gain. You know, I'm like, oh, come on, Jimmy. 
And they give up that one touchdown, which is why people are still kind of only dipping their feet in the pool with this team, being like, are they really, are they, is it really one? Is this, are they really this good? Yeah. Are they? I think that's Four reasonable. <laughs> but in Jim Swartz's defense, right, they held opponents to less than 10 points only twice. Three points and nine points. The Bills, how many times have the Bills done it? The key component that you're missing here, Paul, is this. 294, 268, 255, 253. Passing yards. Bills don't let up more than yeah. 250 ever. You're right. They let up less than 200 today. You're right. <laughs> what? Yeah, this, this is a ridiculous clip the Bills defense is at right now. It's a ridiculous clip. Started with started this episode with Devin, ended with defense. That's how we roll. Buckle up. <laughs> <laughs> you get bumpy.